Hi folks, Matt Diederich here. I'm the technical service manager at PlaneWave. With me today is the L350 mount. And in this video, I'm gonna go through a little bit about the performance and also how to set up the mount to hopefully make it easier when you're at your observatory. The mount itself contains direct drive technology, which means there's no gears on the axes. No gears means no periodic error and no backlash. With the result of encoders on both axes, our tracking precision is between 0.05 and 0.1 arc seconds of error. Pointing accuracy with our pointing model in Plane Wave Interface 4 software is on average between 5 and 10 arc seconds of RMS error across the sky. The 100 pound capacity of the L350 mount allows you to either mount one telescope on the inside, or you can dual mount and have one on the inside and a second telescope on the outside. Sometimes folks will utilize a smaller system such as a 12 inch or even our 14 inch corrected Dahl Kirkham. And on the outside, they'll put a refractor. The L350 mount can be configured in one of two orientations. First, in Altaz configuration, as seen here with a CDK14 on the L350. Safely utilize multiple people when lifting the L350 for Altaz orientation. The L350 can also be installed equatorially with our wedge accessory. To make installation easier for both equatorial and Altaz configuration, the fork arm can be detached from the right ascension base. You'll see later in this video how to detach these two components to make safe lifting possible. The L350 mount ships in Altaz configuration as seen here. When you disassemble the mount and remove it off the pallet, when installing on a pier, please take note of the home position mark. This notch is what will show you how to align on the pier. Users in the Northern Hemisphere will align that mark on the Southern side of the pier. For users in the Southern Hemisphere, you will align that mark facing North. If you're installing your mount in equatorial mode with our optional wedge accessory, you're gonna notice that in your packing supplies, you'll have a shoulder bolt. And this shoulder bolt is gonna go into a hole that is on this side by the azimuth base locking bolt. You can go ahead and remove the six bolts that are locking the top fork arm to the azimuth base. Now I removed all six of these and you'll notice that the mount is gonna to wanna to slide back towards the heel of the mount. And from there, you're disengaged from the shoulder bolts. So you'll wanna make sure that you brace this portion where the motor is most heavy. Now with the six azimuth locking bolts underneath the base removed, we can go ahead and slide the fork arm back and remember, there's a lot of weight up here in the motor, so you want to make sure you brace it and have some gentle cushioning on the ground where we can set it. You're going to see a 3 8 hole, and we're going to tighten that in there. Okay, for a second, imagine this is your observatory and we're standing at the pier. Now, placement of the wedge itself is crucial. So where the shoulder bolt is aiming for users in the Northern Hemisphere should aim south. Now, users in the Southern Hemisphere using a wedge, this shoulder bolt notch is gonna be aimed north. Now, I'm gonna pick up the azimuth base and we're gonna put it on with a shoulder bolt in place. Now, go ahead, take the base. Watch your fingers and gently rest it down onto the shoulder bolt. Make sure that shoulder bolt's nice and tight and you can go around with the longer bolts that were supplied in the box. And you can go around and insert these six screws to tighten down the now right ascension base of the wedge. Now that our right ascension is attached to the wedge, we can go ahead and preferably using two people, lift up the declination axis that I have sitting down and reattach it. Now make sure that you note that we have these two shorter bolt holes and that's where the actual bolts are gonna go in and you're gonna pull them towards you to tighten the actual declination in place so it's resting before we go ahead and taking the bolts, you re-tighten them 
around the right ascension base now. There'll be six of them. So once you get the declination back atop using two people, just for safety, you'll re-tighten those bolts down and make sure they're nice and snug. Okay, now from here, once you have the declination axis on top of the right ascension, the next step is to connect up the mount. Make sure that you reattach the wires that were removed so we can disassemble. And from there, you're gonna go ahead and work through the PlaneWave Interface 4 software user manual to get the mount connected and on the sky. I hope you enjoy this video and that it helps assist you while you install the new L350 mount. In the event that you run into any problems, please feel free to navigate yourself to our website at www.planewave.com and reach our tech support department while I'll happily assist you with any questions you may have. Clear skies and happy imaging.